Okay. Good afternoon again, um, everyone, and, and welcome again to our uh, to our webinar on uh, uh, hybrid cloud storage solutions. Um, my name is uh, Mark Green, and I am on the, uh, the sales team here at at Buffalo. And accompanying me on the webinar is our engineer Gary Thomas. And there we are, that's us there. Um, we uh, really do appreciate you guys all making time to come out and we hope that you uh, do find this beneficial and and uh, we uh, welcome your questions. As we progress along, there's a question section uh, there in the uh, in the sidebar that you can uh, put in your questions and we'll we'll answer those at the uh, the end of the presentation and then, uh, also at the end, we will be uh, doing a drawing for one of our mini station uh, USB drives. Gary, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, just a little bit for you about us at Buffalo. If you are not uh, uh, fully aware of, of who we are, we've been around 40 plus years. Uh, we're based out of, uh, out of Nagoya, Japan. Um, our North American headquarters are in Austin, Texas, and our uh, tech support folks are uh, just south of us down in San Antonio. Um, we are uh, you know, committed to the SMB market with our, our products by both uh, uh, function and design. And uh, you know, we, we also try to uh, emphasize that and be a uh, resource for the uh, the customers and and uh, the VAR partners and such in the SMB market by having a um, a very responsive and dedicated uh, pre and post sales support team um, and our you know our uh, strength and that is on um, our networking products and our storage products which we're going to talk about here in a uh, in a hybrid cloud solution so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let Gary uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about what is a hybrid cloud strategy. All right, so thanks, Mark. So when we say hybrid, hybrid cloud, um, what we're just saying is that, uh, you know, give you more than one uh, place to keep your data, as, uh, as I'm sure uh, maybe some of you are aware, uh, earlier this week, um, one of the big cloud providers had a pretty severe outage uh, and uh, people couldn't get to their data. Uh, it was for, for several hours uh, on, uh, I'll say what those up, that was on uh, Monday uh, or on Tuesday rather, so that uh, it, it was a pretty severe uh, problem. And uh, it, even to the point where the status page for people to check the status of their cloud was uh, was offline uh, because it was hosted in that cloud. Uh, so, you know, the, the cloud is 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 useful, but as as we all know, uh, when we say cloud, we just mean somebody else's computers, and their computers can have problems too. So, what we have to advocate for is a hybrid strategy where you have uh, your data on the cloud. Uh, and you have some data local to you in what we call terrestrial storage. Um, so that uh, it lets you have more flexibility. Uh, and, and remember that data that's closer to you, data that's, that's stored locally is you can get to it faster. Um, in some cases, more secure. We've heard you know a lot about uh, uh, data breaches in, in some of the cloud services. Uh, now, some of those were, uh, we're due to configuration problems uh, by the data owners, not necessarily by the cloud, uh, but it uh, it still has happened. Um, uh, oftentimes, having some uh, a lot of your data stored locally uh, is less expensive in the long run. You don't uh, have recurring fees. Uh, if you need to get that data, uh, it, you can get to it faster. Uh, it just makes you more efficient to have at least some things stored locally rather than uh, uh, rather than in the cloud. Um, in the event of, you know, whether it's a cloud problem or even just, uh, you know, maybe your local internet connection goes down and you can't get to the cloud, then what do you do, right? So as long as you have some, have you know, your data that you use on a regular basis local, 
then you're in much better shape in the long run, I think. <laughs> so the that's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, you know, yep. and, and certainly, I, you know, that's one of the things that that I will certainly talk to a lot of our VAR partners about, and it's it's one of the 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 big things as they start to get into looking at the hybrid solution is having that those multiple points uh, where the data is being stored, and it's it, it is that advantage, like like Gary said, for them to not only have that that offsite cloud, but that local storage for things like you know uh, quicker recoveries or having instant access to the data um, or again as as if you you do drop uh, internet connection or, or things like that you've got that security that you've got that that first line of, of backup is right there in that terror station and, and that data is in there and and it and it's there and it's going to be stored and of course you know once things get uh, uh, restored uh, service wise you can always you know get things uh backed up and 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 moved back over to the cloud as well and and it it is something that i think the biggest part that i feedback that i get from folks is um when getting uh, customers to look at that that hybrid solution where you're going to have your data in two different locations is you know uh, I think the mindset is always it's either or you either have to have local or you need or you have cloud it's not crossed over and and getting them to realize it again you're you're just kind of providing yourself with your your own cloud at this point and and that's this great advantage of having um having that two two locations and then of course um you know, it's also advantages with managing your data as well, right, Gary? I mean, just on what you're collecting, isn't it? Yeah, so so uh, what you could do, I mean, is depending on what your cloud strategy is, right? If you're, uh, if you're using a, a file sharing service like OneDrive or Dropbox, uh, then you're paying for capacity, right? And maybe, uh, maybe you don't need, um, all of that data to be stored in the in the on one of those sharing services where it's it's, it's easily shared. Uh, some of that data can be local, uh, and you save money there. And on with the you know with more long term stuff, um, again the less capacity you use in the cloud, the less you're paying for on, on a monthly basis. So uh, if you can keep some of that local, uh, maybe just store. Uh, I know in many cases customers. Uh, uh, basically do everything locally and just store their backups in the cloud uh, so that uh, in the event that they have a local disaster, uh, they can they can get that data back from the cloud uh, and continue their operations. And it's just, uh, there are a lot of different ways to handle it, uh, a lot of different advantages depending on on how you want to be able to, uh, to access your data. But the fact that you have the two options just gives you a lot more flexibility in the long run, I think. Yeah, and you know, I I think too. I think that's that, that is. Uh, I think the you know that having that data accessible, you know, whether it be you know certain specific files that you need, or if there's something that 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 um, you know you do just store locally in there. That 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 ease of access or the the, the ability to get to it quicker um, is certainly a a, a great item. Um, and again, you know, just going over kind of the, the key points of it is, you know, you've got that data synchronized, you know, anything that's, that's you know, happens locally on that, that Terra Station NAS is going to be reflected um, right out and, and synced with the cloud. Um, and then, like Gary said, I mean, you know, having that sensitive data locally uh, certainly does provide you a, a better avenue for the data security. All right, so um, just to kind of you know uh, recap on what we've been talking about a little bit, uh, you know, keeping some of your data local can, uh, can can definitely maybe save you some money in the long run. Uh, sometimes people look at you know cloud costs and and they look at initial costs and they don't uh, uh, they don't always uh, 
do the calculations or or know or know how to do the calculations to say, well, what is this going to cost me over time? Um, so, uh, in many cases, it's uh, it, it's very um, you know putting data in the cloud is, is low cost, but when you have to retrieve it, uh, then costs can go higher. Um, if you need a, a quick access to a file, obviously having it locally uh, is is much quicker. Um, and by uh, it just uh, you know, especially depending on what your bandwidth is, right? So if you have a uh, if you're in an area or an office uh, where you know you're not, you don't have access to uh, uh, to really fast internet speeds, uh, it may take time to to either get files uh, from the cloud or or to the cloud. And especially in cases like that, if you just want to do uh, use the cloud for uh, backups type storage, uh, maybe you can schedule that uh, uh, schedule that to happen after hours so that your bandwidth isn't being used during the day, uh, and you're that bandwidth that you know if you have limited bandwidth that's used, uh, it's available for uh, uh, for your office use during the day. So it's, it just depends on. Uh, uh, what your situation is and and what your strategy is, but it, it just having multiple uh, again having multiple options uh, just gives you more flexibility in the long run. So real quick, we want to uh, touch on one other option, uh, what we call our private cloud. Uh, if you have the uh, uh, facilities to have terror stations at more than one location, uh, and you're looking primarily for some way to uh, just have an offsite copy of your data so that uh, in the event that something happens to your primary location that you have a copy of the data. Uh, one option is what we call our private cloud where you're replicating from, you know, directly from one terror station to another uh, that's held in a different location just so that, uh, that you have that, uh, that, uh, that offsite location and maybe not have any ongoing fees. And this is actually uh, what we do ourselves here at Buffalo. Uh, is we have uh, uh, all of our uh, backups are run to a terror station locally in our server room uh, and then replicated to another terror station offsite. Um, and uh, we don't incur any extra fees that way and it's uh, it works real well for us. So it may save you money, uh, give you quicker access to the data, especially if the two locations are maybe in the same town. Uh, if you do have a, a, a catastrophic problem with your local data, uh, maybe you can just go grab that other chair station and, and bring it in, right? Uh, and be have your data back on site and ready to run, uh, maybe in a in, in you know an hour or so, rather than uh, if it's a tremendous amount of data and you're trying to retrieve it from the cloud, you may be hours and hours to get all of that data back in place. So, so it gives you uh, a, a little more security. You have control end to end of uh, where the data is. You don't have to worry about. Uh, uh, you know, you know, is it uh, is it secure? Is somebody else access, accessing my data? You have control uh, over all of it end to end. And if you do have to get that data back, um, like we talked about earlier, uh, retrieving data back out of the cloud or data egress uh, sometimes can be very expensive. So you don't have to worry about those costs uh, if you're using a private cloud solution uh, like we have with uh, with our terror stations. Would you agree, Mark? Yes, <laughs> I would. I, I I learned a long time ago never to disagree with uh, with the engineering team. So that's always trouble for sales guys. <laughs> so, um, you know, and just getting into just to talk a little bit about our 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 tear stations and and the ones that we are using for this, uh, you know, and and certainly customers as well. I mean, we're. Uh, um, certainly utilizing our, our 5010 series um, in-house. Um, and we've also got the 6000 as well. Um, you know, the, the great thing again about our products, if, if you aren't aware of it, is we, we do, you know, include the hard drives in, in our products. So uh, that means that, that we have uh, taken the extra effort to test those hard drives a couple more times. Um, over what the manufacturer does and so that we once we put them in the box and and tape that box up and have it ready to go hopefully we've got a very uh uh robust and reliable product that's in there that that's ready to go and it gives you one one stop for um any support issues on that product because it's all coming from one support team 
like I said, our folks here in, in San Antonio. Um, and and that makes it a lot easier when you're dealing with issues and trying to get things back up and going and, and making sure that everything's uh, squared away with your data. Um, both, uh, both lines are TA compliant. They're both VMware ready. Uh, they've got uh, 10 gig connections on the back. They are our units that have a, a faster processor, a little bit more memory. Um, they are all cloud uh, uh, compatible, so they can work in these hybrid cloud solutions. The, um, the 6000s are not uh, compatible with the uh, Amazon S3, um, but they are compatible with all the others. And then the uh, 6000s have the added feature now of um, being able to do uh, snapshot and uh, and uh, storing changes on that tear station locally with snapshots. All right, Jerry, All right, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, again, as I uh, was just. I, I'll take care of this one more. Sure. Why not? I, I, I want to start by, though, by kind of expanding on uh, what you were saying earlier um, about uh, uh, how we pre install our hard drives. Uh, some of you have been following, keeping up with news. Uh, recently, one of the big hard drive vendors changed their uh, technology on their uh, drives. And in an effort to uh, get more capacity in uh, with less cost, they change the way uh, data is stored on the drive. And what happens is that those drives, um, while they perform uh, generally fairly well in a lot of situations, they don't perform well uh, when used in a RAID configuration. So if you were using a NAS that was a chassis only and you went out and bought um, you know, the same general types of drives that you used in the past and installed them in there, uh, and suddenly your performance might be, you know, a third of what you were expecting because you weren't uh, weren't aware that, uh, that the technology in some of these drives have changed. Um, because we do all of our testing in-house uh, on everything before we put it in our uh, systems. Uh, we're not using any of those drives in our systems so that uh, we're, uh, you don't have to worry about that. We, we take care of those things. Uh, and again, I'm going to talk about tech support. Uh, this is something that's that's uh, near and dear to my heart. It's my background. Um, the logo there shows that uh, we won the report card in 2017. That needs to be updated. We actually won that three years in a row, so the 2017, 2018, and 2019. Uh, and as far as I know, they haven't announced the winner for 2020 yet, but we're hoping they make it four in a row this year. So uh, when we say our, our, uh, our support is award-winning, um, that's not just a slogan. Uh, uh, we are winning awards for our support. Um, uh, we are US-based, available 24-7, uh, always on hand. We're available via uh, phone, email, and chat. So however you or your customer needs to be able to contact us, um, uh, we're there for you. Uh, and you know, if, it's, uh, uh, if you're just wondering how to do something, quite often our knowledge base will have uh, information on that. We have a, a wide array of articles in our knowledge base, a, a lot of how-tos uh, that have step-by-step -step instructions, including screenshots that show exactly, you know, here's what you need to do, and 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 here's uh, uh, here's where you go to fix that up. Uh, and many of them also include videos uh, of walking through the process of setting up whatever it is you need to set up. So uh, we have uh, lots of different avenues for support, uh, and we're always available. Uh, to, to help you and your customers out. All right, Mark? That's true. And, you know, one thing I will say on that and is you know, they have not announced the, uh, the, the 2020 winner yet. They've actually just started taking their, uh, their surveys and report cards in. So, um, so it's just getting started. So hopefully uh, if, if you guys participate in that, you are, uh, putting in some good votes for us here at Buffalo. Thank you. Um, you know, a little bit more just, to, you know, to finish up on, I guess, on the the theme that we were kind of talking about in the beginning about, uh, you know, again, over where we kind of fit in with that SMB market, as we've already talked about a couple of times now with the, uh, by design, with adding the hard drives and having those in place and having those tested, 
um, by having the, the RAID already uh, pre-configured on the device so that it's set up. We're really trying to make it as, as much of a plug and play network device as we, we can um, so that when you open up that box, fire it up, put it on the network, you know, you maybe need to create some shares and maybe add a few user accounts and you're you're up and running and ready to go in minutes instead of a couple of hours waiting for for a raid array to be set up and of course uh, my team uh, the sales team and of course the support folks and and gary with the engineering as well we're all here uh, available and uh very easy to get on the phone and talk to and, and, and help you with any uh, product identification needs or any questions on configurations or where do we fit in a, in a scenario and, and how, how, does, uh, how does Buffalo fit in here and how do you guys address, address this? So, um, you know, we, we are, uh, you know, uh, by design that way. And then of course, uh, you know, what a lot of it will ultimately boil down to is, you know, what is that, that cost of ownership? And, and whether it's um, you know us trying to keep the the price point down uh, so that it is an affordable uh, product for smaller businesses, uh, but we're also um, you know trying to add extra value through things um, like the the hybrid solutions to the cloud, things like our remote management service, and things that we're adding in there to to go along with the product to, to really uh, maximize uh, that investment that they're putting in our storage products. So um, I think uh, at this point, I'm gonna uh, open up to what questions we have here. And let's see, the first one I see here, it says, uh, is there a built-in replication function to a remote Terra station? I'll I'll, uh, I'll take that one if you don't mind, Mark. Yeah, I'm letting you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, we can definitely uh, uh, replicate, set up replication to go from one Terra station to another. Um, now, depending on on your network configuration, uh, if you're using a VPN, obviously it's very easy. Uh, if you don't have a VPN, you're just going over the internet, then uh, it uh, it requires some network configuration on the target side, doing some port forwarding. Uh, but it's not complicated. And again, we have a knowledge base article that walks through all, walk you through all of that and tell you exactly which ports to configure. In addition to that, uh, we can also encrypt that data on the wire. So we, uh, all of our chair stations have 256-bit AES encryption built in. Uh, so we can encrypt that data on the wire so that even if you're going over the open internet, you still have some uh, security for your data. All right. I've got one here that came direct to me. Um, let's see, Gary. This one question was asking about in the in a hybrid cloud scenario. What uh -huh. what what type of data would you recommend keeping on the cloud, and what kind would you keep local? Well, that's a difficult question to answer. I'm afraid, simply because. Uh, it, it's it, it can vary depending on what your use case is. So uh, data that you really need to access frequently, you, know, you probably want to keep local, uh, especially if you're using a a, a, a cloud provider uh, like an Amazon S3 or Azure Blob Storage, where uh, you know the, the the data ingress cost, the, you know, the one in the words, the cost to put data in the cloud uh, is very low, uh, and you know. Total storage costs are, are for pretty low, uh, but when you go to to remove pull that data back out of the cloud, so your data egress costs uh, those can be significantly higher. So, uh, you know, in a situation like that, so if you're using that type of uh, cloud storage, then probably infrequently accessed data is best kept there. Uh, I, I think it's a, a great solution with those is using it as an offsite backup uh, repository where you have your backups locally, but you're also uh, sending those backups to that cloud provider. Now, if you have, okay. you're using one of the more file sharing type services like Dropbox or OneDrive, uh, the data that you would put there is the stuff that you need to be able to share with all your users uh, who may not be local to the office. And right now, that's probably a lot of them. Um, 
I know that we're uh, all remote right now at Buffalo. We're none of us are working in the office right now, uh, so you know we're 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 dealing with our own challenges in that regard as far as um, having data where it's uh, uh, easily accessible for all our users uh, uh, who who aren't local to the office. Uh, so uh, it really just depends on your your use case and what type of data it is, uh, and uh, and what your budgets are. So. Okay, thanks. Um, let's see, next question is, um, let's see, well, Joseph, um, I would recommend uh, just looking at your question about the IP address. I would certainly get in touch with our support folks on that one, if you haven't already. Um, I, I don't know that, that we'd be able to answer that one for you here on the, uh, um on the webinar uh, uh, joseph i can uh, i can tell you that's uh that's not something i've heard of uh, not something i've yeah. seen frequently from our customers so uh it's certainly not not a uh a known bug so there may be something going on uh, uh specifically with your terror station or your environment so uh, i would say that uh, uh first thing i would do is make sure you have the, the latest version of the firmware installed on there uh, and then uh do get in touch with our tech support for some help with that so somebody asked, what was the question? Uh, Joseph was saying that uh, he loves his terror station, but it seems to be losing its IP address occasionally. Uh, oh. uh, and again, this is something I haven't seen, uh, not something that uh, if this were happening a lot, I would know about it uh, because uh, I, I am one of the escalation points uh, for our, uh, our tech support group. Uh, and uh, so I would, I would know about it if it were happening frequently. Um, so I, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, but I do think that uh, our support is the best people to help you with that. All right, Mark. All right, Gary, I'll let you go ahead and take that the next one from Greg. All right, any plans for bandwidth shaping for offsite replication backups? Uh, we don't have any plans that I know of right now. Uh, when you set up offsite replication, you can uh, turn on compression uh, so that the data is compressed uh, on the wire. Um, you can turn on both encryption and compression uh, if you like. Uh, so it's uh, so that uh, you're, you're not using as much bandwidth, uh, but I'm not aware of any plans to do specific bandwidth shaping or uh, uh, throttling uh, uh, right now that I'm aware of. So, okay. And to address Jeff's question, uh, the SMR issues in RAID avoided if the drives are used in JBOD. Uh, you know, Jeff, I, I, um, I, I haven't read all the articles on it. Um, so I really, I don't know the answer to that question. So when he says uh, the SMR issues, when I was talking, that's what I was talking about with the drives earlier, where uh, uh, some vendors have put out drives that, that don't perform well in a RAID situation. Um, so if you set it up as a JBOD uh, with no RAID at all, where you're just using four or two or three or whatever individual drives, uh, then their performance is, uh, you know, comparable to uh, to their to their past drives. It's just when you put them in that RAID configuration uh, that they seem to slow down considerably. So, and I'll let you take the next question there, Mark. Sure. Next question from uh, from one of my friends up uh, up in Canada. The why am I looking so happy in my picture? Because because uh, I work at Buffalo and I have great customers like you, Sanjay. So that's that's why I'm smiling. So and maybe that picture was taken on payday. We don't. I don't remember. So. That definitely could have been. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I think the next actual question. Let's see. From uh, Barry is: Do we have a sizing guide for office PCs and small servers? And I'm I'm assuming that you're asking about uh, um, sizing up the the terror station and and what what size storage you're going to need for that. I I don't so, know that there's a real uniform way on that. Is there, Gary? Well, uh, we don't have a sizing guide per se. Uh, what we generally like to do is uh, uh, we like to get more involved with than that. So what we'd like to do is to uh, maybe have a call with you and talk about, you know, what your customers' needs are, um, what uh, what it is you need to accomplish, 
uh, and then we'll uh, we'll be happy to help you to find something that fits uh, in a in a capacity and uh, and cost perspective uh, that, that works with it. So you can just uh, contact your uh, sales rep, uh, and if that's and if they need to, uh, they'll get me on the phone with you, and uh, uh, we can have that discussion. So, and he will, and I will, because uh, he's he's one of my good customers out in California. So. So yes, so okay, let's see. Gary, I'm gonna let you take Jeff's second question here. So uh, any thoughts to adding utility to store firmware on a thumb drive attached to the USB port? Um, so, uh, we, so we do have a way to save the configuration onto a USB drive. Um, and uh, also, on uh, all of our current terror stations, we do employ what we call our duplex firmware, uh, where the firmware is stored in a NAND chip uh, on the system board. So, if you needed to, you could take four, you know, blank drives, uh, put in the terror station, and load the OS on it. Now, it doesn't save configuration, uh, but it can restore the bare OS back to a near factory condition. Uh, so the and the configuration itself can be stored on a USB drive, uh, and then maybe that USB drive stored somewhere where it's uh, uh, accessible if you need to, to restore the configuration or push that configuration onto a new terror station. All right. <laughs> uh, next one, question about, uh, do your products have malware protection? I'll, I'll leave that one to you as well, Gary. <laughs> Well, we don't have uh, any kind of uh, malware protection per se. Um, we do have uh, a built-in Trend Micro virus scanner uh, on all mm -hmm. of our tuner stations. Now that does require a, a, a license from Trend Micro to keep definitions up to date. Uh, so don't have, um, so it can do active scans and, and, uh, and offline scans, uh, however you configure that. Now, it, uh, uh, we don't have any specific thing in place to prevent malware specifically. Um, you know, the Terror Station 6000s do have the snapshot capability to, uh, to, to give you a, another avenue to recover in the event of a malware attack. Uh, so that, uh, you know, if, uh, if something does go in and start encrypting the shares, uh, then you can, once you get the environment cleaned up, you can you can roll that data back to a, from one of the snapshots to, to get you back into a state before the attack happened. Uh, but we don't have anything that's specifically anti-malware. Right. Now, and I know, Gary, that that also just a lot of times, especially when when the product's being used as a as a, a backup target, it's it's how you kind of and you you and the support team recommend how you set up the users who have access to that data, right? Right, so, and, and again, uh, uh, all of our backups in-house are stored on a terror station, um, as, as well as a lot of our live data, but uh, uh, all of our backups are stored on a terror station, and uh, that is configured so that there's a specific user account that is only used by the backup software, nobody else, uh, Nobody logs into any servers or computers using that account. So it's only used by the backup software. And that account is the only one that has right access uh, to the, uh, uh, the share where the backup is stored. So uh, unless that account itself were compromised, the, the, then you couldn't get those backups. So that's, uh, um, you know, a lot, a lot of times security is, uh, uh, is, uh, is in configuration as well as in, you know, what, uh, what devices capabilities actually are. Right. Okay. Well, great. Um, Jason has the question, is there any roadmap for new features? Um, I think we're always um, trying to add new features, new functions to the products. Um, a lot of it does come from uh, requests of, of, of the people using the products. So, um, a lot of that is driven by by you folks there, you know, watching this webinar. So, um, you know, if if you have uh, something that you would like to see, um, you know, uh, let your let your account manager at Buffalo or or um, 
you know, or your uh, service provider, if you're an end user, uh, you know, let them know the the folks that are working with us as well, and and pass that along to us because that's the the avenue that we're going to get things um, to to um, engineering to build it. So, you know, the 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 part of the thing that we have is that we are with us being the the U.S. based side of the company and and the main engineering being over in Japan, uh, they don't always have direct access to uh, to hearing exactly what you guys are saying. So it's always kind of going through us. So uh, there are roadmap plans. There are things that are looking to be added. There are new uh, new versions of our um, uh, Terra Station uh, 3, 3010 series. There's a new version of those that, that's looking to come out down the road. There are updated versions of our Windows storage server products that are coming along. Um, that are are slated to come in this year. We just on the 6000 series, we just re released new models that are um, partially populated. Um, the the 6000s themselves with the snapshot feature that was a uh, you know a, a product that was released towards the end of the year, I guess last year that mm -hmm. that came from feedback of that. So that's where by design. So. Um, so yeah, it's it's basically how how that works, and and you know it's it's um, I think it's always it's always a um, uh, it's always a a a measured thing that I think that um, they they're always weighing what what's available and and what resources that they have to put into that. I mean, you know, for me, I mean, it's. Um, I would love to be responsive and be able to add everything that that folks want in there, but sometimes it's just not um, it's not um, uh, feasible on our side to to get much beyond that. So um, yeah, um, let's see. So um, and as far as on on the new features, uh, any discussion about a virtual machine manager? Uh, well, uh, I will say that um, I haven't heard any such discussions. Um, uh, that sort of feature would require a considerable more, uh, a considerably larger amount of uh, uh, compute power and uh, memory than we typically install in our machines. So it would uh, obviously raise that cost uh, considerably, uh, as well as uh, the development to get it in, you know, you know in place in, in our OS. So I think we'd add significantly to the to the cost of whatever uh, uh, that device was, and I'm not sure it's something that uh, that uh, that we're going to be trying to move into. Uh, now we are looking at uh, ways to do uh, uh, using our Windows storage server devices um, to to uh, have a, a a temporary emergency type VM uh, situation where you could spin up a VM from backup. Uh, you know, to in a uh, in a short-term situation, uh, while you get the uh, the hardware fixed that uh, the backup was taken from, uh, but uh, I, I don't know of any uh, 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 plans to uh, to to have a a virtual machine host um, from us. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, Jason, to your next question about uh, the 10 gig uh, upgrade option. So, all of, uh, for the most part, all of our devices are ARM based. So, there's no expansion slots uh, or anything like that. So, we have uh, the 5010 series and the 6000 series include 10 gigabit Ethernet built in. Uh, and it's not an option on the 3010. We don't, it, like I said, uh, our, right now our units don't even have, uh, we don't have uh, expansion slots or any way to expand uh, uh, the capabilities of those. The, the hardware, uh, everything is on the motherboard, so it, it is kind of what it is. All right. So uh, at this point, I know we're we're running beyond our our uh, time we 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 put aside for you guys. Um, so any other questions that come in, we will certainly uh, answer them offline. And and please uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with us if you have any other questions. Um, so at this point, um, I am going to. Uh, draw a name out of the hat 
for our winner of the uh, the mini station. So let me uh, get here. All right, our winner is Charles Paris. Par yeah, Charles Paris. Charles, con congratulations. And we will uh, we will be in contact with you to get that uh, mini station to you. So um, at this point, I just wanna say thank you again, everybody for attending. Um, I, I hope that uh, this was valuable and you've found some good information on how to utilize our, our products with a hybrid cloud solution or a private cloud or however, what works best for you and your, your, your environment or your customer's in, environment. and um, Please do get in touch with us if there's anything else we can do. And I hope you uh, uh, have a great rest of your day. And thanks again for attending.